Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Testing one, two.
Amen, amen. It is 630. And you know, I'm so happy being in the house of the Lord. Why don't we stand and go before the Lord in prayer? Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you this evening. We thank you for what you are doing. God, that you're not a God that's dead, but you are still alive. We're thankful, God, that we're on our way to heaven. I said we're on our way to heaven. God, you came, you saved us, you cleansed us, you've been keeping us, God. I can't wait till I see you face to face. We thank you for who you are and what you're doing, what you're doing in our city, what you're doing in our lives, what you're doing in our families. We thank you because, Lord, the word of God is true. You said, let God be true and every man a liar. We worship you. We thank you, God. I said, won't you praise him like you know him? Praise him because he's worthy. We love you, Lord. We're thankful. We're thankful, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We love you. Amen. We're going to be singing that song today when we all get to heaven. When we all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercies and his grace. In a mansion bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. While we walk, while we walk this pilgrim's pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. Come on, clap. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout. Let us then, let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toys of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout. Onward, onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, We'll sing and shout the victory. Won't you go ahead and praise him? Hallelujah, Lord. I'm looking forward to that day when I'm in heaven, Lord. No more pain. No more sorrow. Oh, no more sin, Lord. No more wars, God. But just seeing you face to face. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you for the promise of heaven. Thank you for your goodness, God how you're working things out. Do you know even when we don't see him, he's working. Even when we don't even know it, he's working on our behalf. He's moving in, in the situation right now. We're so thankful for what you're doing, Lord. We're thankful because soon we'll fly away. I said one day we're going to fly away. Let's sing that. Let's sing that. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll to a home, to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll in the morning when I die, hallelujah, by and by. Oh, yes, when the shadows, when the shadows of this life is gone, I'll, like a bird, like a bird from prison bars has flown, I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory. 
glory out. Oh, in the morning when I die, hallelujah, by and by. You know, just a few, just a few more weary days and then out to a land, to a land where the joy shall never end. I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll, in the morning when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, fly away, oh in the morning when I die, hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away. Won't you praise him tonight? We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise him. Amen. You love God this evening? Why don't you lift them hands up? Lift them lighten them rods up. Lift up holy hands without wrath and not, without doubt. Say, Jesus, I got a need. You can talk to him. Say, God, I need you. Lord, feed me from your word, God. God, give me a blessing, Lord. Don't let go until he blesses your soul. Let him work a miracle in your life. Reach up to heaven. Believe God. Call on his name. Let him show you great and mighty things that you know of not. Amen, amen. Praise God, amen. It's time you may be seated. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'd like to welcome each one to the house of the Lord. Amen. Y'all doing all right? Amen. I feel like we need to sing another song or so. We need to sing another song. We seem like we're, a little, we're sleepy. Y'all tired? Man, I wish I had. I wish we had God's not dead. We got a... Um, we got, we got this though. We got to the utmost. I may mean, believe he's saying, let's stay here. Let's say that. Jesus says to the utmost. Jesus says he will pick you up and he'll turn you around. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus said, if you You will surely pass the test to the utmost. Jesus says to the utmost. Jesus says, what will he do? He will pick you up and he'll turn you around. Oh, ha oh hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus says, there ain't but one thing I've done wrong. I stayed a sinner. Much too long to the utmost, Jesus says, to the utmost, Jesus says, he will pick you up and he'll turn you around. Oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, Jesus. There ain't but one thing I've done wrong, I stayed a sinner. Much too long to the utmost. Jesus said, Y'all know this to the utmost. What will he do? He has picked me up and he's turned me around. Oh, hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! There ain't but one thing I've done wrong. I stayed a sinner. Much too long to the utmost. Jesus says to the utmost. Jesus says he has picked me up and he turned me around. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Why don't you worship him? Worship him. Amen. Amen. Oh, Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
How many are thankful for his saving power? How many love Jesus this morning, this evening? I ain't, we ain't done yet. We ain't done yet. Coming down. We gonna sing that song, Coming Down, Coming Down. Coming down, 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 coming down, down, down. The glory of the Lord is coming. When the saints, when the saints begin to pray for the Lord to have his way. The glory of the Lord is coming. Coming down. Coming down, 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 coming down, down. The glory. When the saints, when the saints begin to pray for the Lord to have his way. The glory of the Lord is coming down. Coming down, 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 coming down, down, down. The glory of the Lord is coming. When the saints, when the saints begin to pray for the Lord to have his way. Glory. Let's sing it one more time. Coming down, 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 coming down, down, down. Glory of the Lord is coming down. When the saints begin to pray for the Lord to have his way. Let's sing that song, I'm saved. I'm saved, and I know that I am. I'm saved, and I know that I am. I'm saved. I'm so glad I know. I'm so glad I know that. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed. By the blood of the Lamb, I've been redeemed. I'm so glad I know saints. I'm so glad I know that. I'm sanctified. I'm sanctified. And I know that I am. I'm sanctified. And I know that I am. I'm sanctified. I'm so glad. How about you this evening? I'm so glad I I've been set free. I've been set free. I know that I am, I've been set free, and I know that I am, been set free. Put my hands together, I know that I am, I'm so glad. This is my favorite part right here, I'm going to heaven. Heaven, and I know that I am, I'm going to heaven, and I know that I am, I'm going to heaven. I'm so glad I know, hallelujah, I'm so glad I know that I am worship him tonight. Hallelujah. God, we thank you, Lord, for your sweet presence, God, for coming down, Lord, coming down to die for our sins, coming down to live the perfect life, God, coming down to pay the penalty on the cross, coming down to go to hell for us, coming down so you can rise again. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for new life. We thank you for a fresh touch from the master. Amen, amen. At this time, you may be seated. Amen. Praise God. Praise him. We need that old chorus. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noontime. Praise him in the... Praise him on the highways. Praise him on the byways. Everybody praise him. <laughs> praise him. Come on and praise him. Amen. It's, it's wonderful. Amen. I'm thankful we get to praise God and worship him in spirit and truth. It's just a privilege. Amen. How many? Thankful. Amen. That God, you know, he's still... On the throne. I said he's still in control this evening. He's not twiddling his thumbs or he doesn't sit on his fingers. Amen? Amen. God is very much alive. Amen. Let him come alive in your heart this evening. Amen. Let it be a burning fire shut up in your bones. Amen. Begin to stir yourself up if you feel lethargic. Begin to stir yourself up if you feel lazy. Begin to stir your faith up. Look to God. Amen. And let God have his way in your heart. Amen. And we're going to uh, wait upon you for the Sunday evening tithe and offering. Let's give. Let's pay our tithe. That's unto the Lord. And I would like to ask at this time, Sister Eileen, ma'am, if you would stand and pray for the gift and giver this evening.
Thank you for your gift and your giving. May God bless you at this time, Sister Everett. She's going to sing a special for us. the Lord this evening. There was something, some, something I was supposed to say. I forgot what it was. I didn't have it. I don't got it written down here. We're going to try to, uh, <clears throat> is it Easter before Easter or is it April 18th? Is it April 18th? Anyway, the week before Easter, we want to try to have some special services. Um, 
want to do a baptismal service. I think we got a couple that, a couple people that need to be baptized. We're trying to find a pool right now. Um, everybody's still shut down. They won't let us use the folks I've called. They haven't called me back, but we're in the process of doing that. So trying to figure that out. Then we got Palm Sunday, the week before Easter. Also, we want to this week, this week, just going back to this week, this Wednesday, actually, we want to have a special, special if you can make it, uh, if you can make it, if not, no, no harm, no foul, but special prayer service uh, for different ones, especially Ukraine, praying for the situation there. Also here, various things. And so uh, 6.30, we want to go for 45 minutes Wednesday. We're going to still have our prayer meeting Tuesday, as we usually do, but a special prayer meeting, corporate prayer. It's nothing like unified prayer. And so if you would like to be a part of that, like to make a difference for God, it would be a blessing to have you out. Amen. And so this Wednesday, 6.30, after that, we're going to probably fellowship. If y'all would like to, we'll be here anyway. We're just going to fellowship, maybe play some games, whatever the case may be. But just to get get the hangout, amen. It'll be a blessing. I, I trust it'll be a blessing. Definitely will be a blessing to have each of you all able to make it if you can. I think that was the announcement. Thank you, Joey. You said this week. I think it, it clicked. <laughs> amen. Oh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Daylight Savings next Sunday. Amen. We'll send Facebook posts and also the notification if you get the text messages, obviously. But just a friendly reminder, don't forget to uh, go back. Is it forward? Okay, I'm sorry. Spring forward. I'll, I'll have you two hours off. Amen. As we're going forward. Amen. Isn't that what God told Moses? Go go forward. Amen. Well, let's go forward. Amen. In time. So we, we gain an extra. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I thought we was losing an extra hour, man. I, I already got good news. I forgot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was thinking about it on the way here. I was looking forward to the sunshine. Did y'all see that sunset coming in? It's a blessing. Amen. Gospel of Luke chapter 12. Continuation from this morning. Two verses of scripture here. This is also our text verse tonight. Gospel of Luke chapter 12. Beginning here at verse 6. Jesus speaking here, are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And none of them is forgotten before God. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. That's easier than easier for some than others, right? Is that right? God's like, yes, this was easy. <laughs> Amen. Oh, everything's easy for God. Amen. I'm just kind of kidding around, kidding a little bit. Fear not, therefore, ye are more valued are of more value than many sparrows. He said this is question. If you weren't here this morning, we know sparrows are small birds. A farthing is an old English coin that's equal to about one-fifth of our English penny. Less Something less than a penny. God is still concerned about it. Now, you can't remember the last thing you brought for a penny. God is concerned about things, amen, that are insignificant to us. They're very important to God. You are important, amen? Amen. Praise God. For the help of the Lord, your help, and your help this evening, we'd like to continue on with our message from this morning. You don't have to self know your worth, amen? Part two. Sister Priscilla, man, if you would pray for the message this evening. Amen. We talked about our worth, knowing your worth. Amen. Bible tells us we are fearfully and wonderfully made as human beings. Each and every one of us this evening, we are very much important to God. Can I get a witness out there? The last thing we want you to feel as if you're not important. You matter to God. Because you matter to God, you matter to the people of God. Amen. You're not just a number. Amen. You are a soul. You're priceless. We talked about knowing your worth. We talked about the word of God and how we're not to fear. God does not want us to fear. We don't have to settle to fear. Are you with me? 
We don't have to settle for smooth preachers, people that tell us what we want to hear. Remember we talked about that too? Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. I mean, thankful for people that tell you the truth. Amen. The truth hurts sometimes, but thank God for truth. Amen. My wife be saying, man, your breath stank. Get in there again, and let's pull that toothbrush out. Yeah. Amen. You know, hey, when you get married, after the ring, you wake up. Amen. You start smelling that morning breath. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Praise God. I want to start right here with the value of the human soul and how it is priceless. Jesus said here in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 13, Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. He said, if you do what I tell you to do, you're my friends. How many know that Christians are the friends of God? Amen. Amen. Paul the Apostle tells us in Romans chapter 5, verse 6, he said, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely... For a righteous man will one die. In other words, it's difficult even for a righteous man for somebody to die. Perhaps for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's the value of a human soul. God demonstrated his love when we were in sin. How many of you know all sin is against God? It's a, in fact, it's an assault upon God. Amen. How many believe that Jesus can save us from sin? He wants to save our soul. Amen. Hey, they're here. The baby. Oh, hey, hey Erica, how you doing? <laughs> hey, Israel. <laughs> I'm just kidding, that guys. We appreciate these guys. Amen. Amen. What's up, Israel? How you doing? Praise God. You get a, you get a special attention. Amen. We really do. We appreciate the youth, amen. They're the future. I'll be thinking about my buddy right there, Israel and Brody. Like, man, I can't quit, boy. They looking at me. They watching my life, amen. I got to keep going, amen. Some people depending on me. I, really, I'll be thinking about these things, amen. These kids, they watch your life. Amen. How I many know I was talking about it as we was co- going in the house today? You know, our neighbors are watching our lives. Like, man, they always coming to church back and forth. They got the suits on. Where they going? They know where we're going. I'm thankful, amen, that I'm touching the right things, amen, even at home. So I don't give them a bad report about God. There's nothing but good things I can mention about God. There's no sad stories. Anybody got anybody know what I'm talking about? Praise God. Paul the Apostle tells us right here, amen. This is the value of the human soul. It's priceless. He said in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard it. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 13, there was a woman who chose not to accept her situation. You don't have to accept what, where you're at in life right now. That's freedom in itself. Praise God. You don't have to accept where you are at in your life. How many know, as Pastor Davis used to share, our founder, founder of our organization, you are the sum total of the decisions you make. Where you are at right now is a direct result of the decisions you've made in your life thus far. Come on now. If we want to get better results, we got to change some of the things we're doing. Amen? Amen? Listen, folks, God can give us his word. If we got God's word, we have God's mind. We got God's authority. We got God's power. We got God's love. We got God's grace. How many know you need grace, amen? I need favor, amen? I want God's favor. I want his face to shine upon me, amen? Check this out in the Gospel of Luke, amen? We find a lady who did not accept her uh, uh, her lot in life, if you will, amen? She did not allow her uh, beginning to be her end. I said, amen, she did not allow her beginning to be her end. The Bible tells us here in Luke 13, verse 10, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day. Sabbath day, Jesus teaching. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. If I need faith in my life, I need to get in a place to where I can hear from God. Well, preacher, how do you know God's voice? Getting it wrong oftentimes. And accrediting things to God that God didn't say. Then you find out, wait, wait, wait a minute. Let me stop saying God said this, that, and other. 
Amen. Hearing God's voice, it comes by spirit, say, man, in the word of God. As you, you're skilled in the word of God, and you begin to see, okay, this is what God wants in my life. This is what he expects in my life. Amen. Check this out. Amen. The Bible says, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. She had this spirit of infirmity for 18 years. And the Bible tells us she was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. She had this scoliosis or whatever, this curvature, this spine disease, if you will. So she was walking like this, but she didn't allow, allow her illness to stop her church attendance. Folks, we got to stay in a place to where we can hear from God. Amen. If you want a blessing from God, that ain't, that ain't the time to pull back on your attendance. It's not the time to pull back on your Bible reading. It's the time to say, you know what? I'm not going to accept my, uh, my, my, my lot in life. I'm not going to accept my Ill illness in life. I'm not going to accept my disease. Amen. I'm not going to accept my shortcomings. I I got to get in a place to where I can hear from God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now Luke, he was a physician. The writer Luke. Luke who wrote, wrote the gospel of Luke and the book of Acts. He was a doctor, all right? He was a doctor. Luke, now notice he describes this woman's problem because he had he was a doctor. This is what doctors should do. They describe the problem. He tells us, amen, she had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. Now, let that sink in. 18 years, the same thing. Two decades, almost two decades, the same problem. She could not lift up. She couldn't even help herself stand up straight, folks. So you don't have to settle. When you got a God that can straighten you out. You got to get in the Bible. This lady had to have some faith, man. You Ain't no way you got an illness like this and you're still coming to church. You're still seeking God. You know she had faith. My little sister Brown, Robert. Paralyzed, waist down. Still coming to the house of God. Often. Praying often. Listening to the scriptures often. Getting the word of God in your noggin often. Not a self. Oh, man, I feel bad. You're going to feel bad sometimes. Get in the Bible. Believe what God said. Amen. That speaks to me, amen, of, of people who stuck, st stayed at it. You got to fight for what you want. How many want a blessing today? Well, if you want a blessing in your life, you're going to have to fight. We're already here, amen, in a great place to hear from God, amen, to know, amen, that we can make it, amen, that we don't have to accept what we're going, what we're going through. We don't have to accept our situation. We don't have to accept our circumstance. There's a God in heaven this evening, amen, that wants to straighten you out. In this particular case, the lady had an infirmity. Preacher, what are infirmities? Infirmities are weaknesses, illnesses, feebleness of mind or a feeble body. How many of you know we all got infirmities? There are certain things, hey amen, you can help yourself. You can straighten your problems out. And some of you, you're trying to straighten your problems out without Jesus. You need Jesus to straighten it out. I said you need God in your life to help you straighten it out. So you can, well, preach, I've been battling with this for a long time. Don't accept your situation. Say, you know what? I'm going to believe, amen, that God can straighten it out, amen. Even in 2022, God is still working things out. He's still straightening things out. He's still moving, amen. He's still doing what he does best. And that's all things well. That's a long time to battle with the weakness, 18 years. But it was not just the weakness, no doubt. She suffered from low esteem and depression. You got to know that. Because we talked about it Tuesday night. Oftentimes, folks that have these illnesses, they feel discouraged. They feel discouraged. Let's put ourselves there really quick. 18 years, same story. Day in, day out. She could not even lift. She didn't even have enough strength to lift herself up. I don't believe she felt at the time that she was fearfully and wonderfully made. I believe she had a lot of days where she felt inferior. Where she felt like, why me? Where she felt like, you know what, God, I don't understand. Where she felt like, God, you, you left me like this, amen. But so what, uh, amen, she said, amen, even if God don't heal me, I'm still coming to church. Even if God don't do this, that, and the other, I'm still going to get to God. Even if God doesn't do it, I still believe he can. We still got to believe. 
Don't say but if, say even if. Don't say but if. God, this, that, and the other doesn't happen. No, say even if. Even if it does happen, God, you're still good. God, even if it doesn't, even if it does happen, God, I still can trust you. God, even if it doesn't happen, God, I can, I can still confide in you. God, even if it doesn't happen, God, I know you're with me. God, even if it doesn't happen, you'll never leave me. But on the Sabbath day, as she fought through how she felt, what she was going through, she made her way to the house of God. Folks, the house of God, this isn't, oh, man, I ain't got nothing going on today. Let me go to church. No, that can't, that, that's not the mind of a person that got faith. That's not the mind of a person that's looking for God to move in their life. That's not the right attitude to have. Folks, God, don't you realize God can see our faith? I was telling them about it a little bit this morning. God can read faith. It's not something, I believe God. No, God sees past the surface and what we say. Faith can be seen. Unbelief can be seen. Folks, faith is simply just saying, God, this is what it is right here. You did it for that lady that was in that weakness for 18 years. God, I need you to straighten my problem out. God, I need you to straighten my life out. God, I will not take no for an answer. I believe you can do all things. That's faith. Trusting God's word. It's infallible. It works. He never fails. Amen. He never comes up short. He never is never maybe or my if, if this work out or that work out. He said all things, all the promises of God are in him. Yes and amen. amen. Yes, I'll do it. Yes, I got you covered. Yes, I can do the impossible. Yes, yes, yes. Do you believe? Amen. Don't settle. Bible says this, and when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, woman, these are beautiful words right here, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. She got to church. Amen. Jesus saw her faith. No, the Bible doesn't say, yo, when he literally saw her faith, but it's obvious. He called her. She had enough faith to come to church. She was ill. She'd been in this condition for almost 20 years. He, she got to church. I mean, of course, Jesus, she, baby, she had heard. You know, Jesus had already been teaching in those synagogues. She just so happened to be in the right place at the right time. Amen. When, when the move of God is here, it ain't a time for you to be home because you may miss out. It may be an opportunity to get something from God, but you're at home trying to sham and all these things when we need to be in the house of God, in a place, amen, to God, to what God can straighten us out, amen, to what God can move in our life, amen, to what God can heal our body, amen, to what God can heal our mind, amen, to what God can fix our life, amen, to what God can fix our marriage. He said, woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. Loose. The word loose here means to free fully. This ain't a half-baked operation. She was loose from her weakness. She had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. Jesus speaks these words of comfort to her and said, you're loose. She had not yet been healed outwardly. She just had God's word. In God's mind's eye, it was already an accomplished fact. But she was still like this. See, folks, you got to believe what God said. Well, well, God, I don't feel nothing. God, I don't see nothing. She simply took God at his word. She said, I'm loose. He said, I'm loose. He said, God, I don't see nothing. That's an attitude of unbelief. You're always looking for the tangible. Oh, I got to see it. If I, if I if see it, it's believing. You're never going to have nothing from God. You're going to always come up short. You're always going to be mad at everybody. You're always going to be finding fault with everybody. You're always going to be pointing the finger at this, that, and other. Believe what God said. Amen. That's what we got. You've got to believe it's already an accomplished fact. No, you can't see it with your natural eye, but in your mind's eye, amen, in your, in your thinking, amen. you got to let your thinking elevate to God, amen. you got to realize that his ways are higher than your ways. His thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Just believe what God has said. Amen. It's that simple talking about it in the car. My wife said, you know what? We can believe God for everything that's in the Bible. And that's simple, but yet at the same time, it's kind of profound. But as you experience more of God's goodness, and God answered one prayer, and all you did was believe, amen. You didn't do anything crazy or anything. You ain't gonna see the, uh, the shrink or you ain't work yourself up to believe. You just simply say, you know what? I'm gonna start believing God. God, you said this right here. I'm claiming it for myself. You gotta believe that you're loose from your infirmity. That Jesus, he's the authority. He's the final authority. If God said you're loose from the devil, that means you are loose. Amen. You're free. 
who the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. How many know what I'm talking about? Amen. Don't you sell until you're touched by God. You cannot sell. You cannot stop. You cannot quit. You cannot wait. You cannot doubt. You got to get that touch from God. I said tonight, we can get that touch from God to what God will uh, confirm his word, amen. To what God will speak to your life, amen. To what God will speak to your problems, amen. You got to get that touch from God Almighty. Amen. She didn't stop until she was touched by God. Jesus spoke the word. She got, had no faith. Let's go through the, the story carefully now. Disease, 18 years. Walking like this to the house of God. You know, some people, boy, they, they, you can stay 10 minutes away, still won't go to come to church. They got a car and everything, amen. People in here, some people in here, they catch the bus every single service. They still get to the house of God. We got gas. We got cars. Well, I don't know. We may have to get, I may have to get me one of them electric cars. It's almost $5 a gallon, amen. But you know what I mean, folks? You can't make excuses for why you can't do it, amen. You got to say, God, give me the strength to do it. I don't want to do it. God, I'm tired in my mind, but I need to get to the house of God so I can be touched by you. And he said unto us, and he's laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Have no faith to get to the house of God. Jesus said, woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. God doesn't do anything without your permission. She had enough faith to believe God. That's why she was dead in the first place. He cannot act without your permission. You got to let God have sway or control in your heart. In your heart, in your heart, you gotta let God sit on the throne of your heart. You gotta let God have His way in your life. God, I feel this way, God. I've heard this, God, but I, I see your word, God. You said I can be loose, I can be fully free. I'm taking you at your word. The Bible says He laid His hands on her. Can you imagine being touched by God? Touched by the very hands, amen, that held the nails in His hands. That shaped the first man out of the dirt. Immediately she was made straight and glorified God. She experienced the miracle. She was made straight by the touch of the master's hand. You know when you get touched by God in the service or in just in the prayer meeting and you, when you don't. The enemy of prayer is wandering thoughts. The enemy of church services is wandering thoughts. When, you, when your thoughts begin to wonder, you got to get, get your mind back on the service while you came here. Amen. It ain't a time to be going to the back when, when it's time for an altar call. You do whatever you want to do, but you ain't going to get nothing from God that way. Right. God, I know you're running. I know you're running. I ain't stupid, man. You think I was born last night? Come on now, really? On. You really think God believed that? It ain't the time, amen, to be looking around. and you know, man, It's time to pray. It's time to get up, and you wonder why God can't bless. You wonder why God can't move. You wonder why God can't heal. You wonder why God can't deliver because you won't get down off your ego. Come on, come on. Man. They came to Jesus. Jesus didn't come to them in some cases. Now, he was looking. He made himself available, but they had heard about the teaching. Hey, amen. You got to hear God can do it. I said he can do it even in your life. You are valuable and important to God. Amen. How many want to be touched by God tonight? I want, I want that fresh touch, amen. The Bible says, amen, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying he sympathizes with our weaknesses. Infirmities are weaknesses. Feebleness. Feebleness of mind. Depression. Doubt. Feebleness of illness, whatever it may be, he is touched. He is concerned. He sympathizes. They don't say, look at that clown over there, man. They sick this time. This time I ain't doing nothing for him. He's touched. He's concerned. When you're battling the devil in your mind, he's very much touched. When you're trying to fight through depression, when you're trying to fight through insecurity, when you're trying to fight to get to the house of God, God is touched. He said, but was in all points tempted like as we are. In other words, he went through what you went through. He sat with you, where you sat. But this is the kicker right here, yet without sin. He did it all yet without sin. So now you got somebody that got some street cred, so to speak. You got somebody you can go to. You ain't got some fellow that's broken than you are and you looking for a loan. This fellow, Jesus, he been through everything we've been through, yet without sin. He got victory. 
And if we got that kind of God in our lives, we too can get bitten. Now, Paul, he, tell, he sums it up right here in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. He follows it up, amen. I just read verse 15. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, but I want to read 16. He explains all this, amen, how we got this great high priest. He's not the Pope. He's Jesus, the son of the living God. He said, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we might find what? Mercy. We may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. This is the kicker why people, so many people, they, this is a revolving door. They walk out of the house of God the same way because they don't come to the throne of God boldly. They don't come. How many of you know you can act like you're praying and you're really not connected with God? You're just trying to show off? Bro, it's God. This is about you and God. This ain't about anybody else but you and God. God has what you need. He can bless your life. He can do exactly what he said he does in the Bible, what he did in the Bible. you got to come to the throne room of God boldly. Forget who sees it. Forget what happens. Connect with God. Even if you got to cry, slots and boogers, you just got to let that emotion show, so to speak. Amen. You got to have enough faith to take God at his word. You need mercy tonight? Take God at his word. Come to the strong room boldly with confidence. I'm not letting go, God. You said I can have it, God. You said I, I, can, do it. I can do it, God. You tell me, amen, I can get mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Amen. We need God's grace, amen. We need, God, we need God's mercy. We need compassion. We need pity. We need help. God, that is the Son of God. It's touched by your weaknesses. He tells us what to do. Come to the throne room of God boldly. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is how folks be. I'll be seeing this stuff. It ain't just here. It's all over the place. It's, it's out the car. Oh, my God. I'm like, man, they ain't finna get nothing. They ain't, nothing. They ain't changing nothing. They ain't getting nothing. They ain't getting nothing. Man, it's time to dig boogers now, man. It's time to do that in the bathroom. <laughs> You came here for God. God ain't finna do all the work. You gotta put some skin in the game. Put some faith in this thing. I want to share something with you. I'm almost done. Don't sell the way, man. You gotta get that touch from God tonight. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 through 17. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. They were controlled by devils. They brought these people to Jesus. Jesus don't care how bad and big the devil may think he is. He's the one that has our power. Check this out. He said, and he cast out the spirits with his word. He said, and healed all that were sick. They brought them to Jesus, though, didn't they? All right. You got to bring your problems to Jesus. If you want to be delivered from it, you got to bring it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You got to tell it to Jesus. Take your problems to Jesus. Take God at his word. Say, God, you got all power. I need to stay cast out of my life. You're looking at miracles after miracles. I'm a walking miracle. <laughs> because of God's word. <laughs> Many of you could probably attest to it. You're a walking miracle, living miracle. Miracle after miracle. You know, it's easy. I was telling the brother about this Saturday. It's so easy this, uh, the list, everything that's going wrong. How about we just flip it real quick? And really, i got to practice more of this, more thankfulness. Start writing down everything that's going right. Amen. It's easy to think, man, this went wrong, this went wrong. Start writing down everything that's going right in your life. How about that? And we got to flip this, amen, because the world it has so much going on in it, amen. Well, that's why we got to have that attitude of thankfulness. Praise you, God. I thank you, Lord. God, you've been good to me, God. God, I thank you for answering this prayer. I thank you for answering that prayer. Write it down. And when God answers, amen, say, yes, it's checked off, amen. Begin to thank God. Begin to praise God. Begin to give him glory in your life. Got to have an attitude of thankfulness. When you, you ever notice, amen, when you was thankful towards your parents, you say, mommy, thank you, thank you. They gave you more. But then you say, hey, man, what's this? I want this. They ain't give me anything. God, the same way. Amen. You don't think God got feelings? He ain't so fast, Santa Claus. If we thank God more and truly thank him from the heart, we'll get more. Amen. That makes sense? Yeah. Amen. And he said this, amen, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. How I many of you know Jesus went about doing good? 
He's still going about this evening right now in this service. He said, with two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst. So he's right here. He's going about trying to do you good, trying to heal you, to make you whole. He said, God is with us. God is with us in this service. Folks, feel the presence of God for yourself, amen. Begin to say, you know what, God, get this fog out of my life. Get this uh, doubt out of my mind. God, get this insecurity out of my life. God, touch me from the throne room of Almighty God. In Luke chapter 13, verse 14, and the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. He was angry because this lady got healed. You know, some Christians, I use the term loosely, they're not happy when people come to church. They're not happy when people get stuff from God. And it's evident because, I man, God, you just say, man, brother, God bless this, that, and all that happened. Picking their teeth. Wait a minute. You ain't excited? Man, you ain't got no emotions. Stoic and all that. Like, man, where your fire at, man? Get your fire back. Get the fire of the Holy Ghost back in your life. Amen. We got to stir ourselves up. We should be excited. People coming to church, people coming to the altar, people uh, uh, want God. They want more of God. We ought to be excited. Amen. That's something to shout about. Amen. I said it's something to praise God about. Ruler answered with indignation because Jesus, he had healed the man on the Sabbath day. Maybe he talked with a little. <laughs> it said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to work. And them, therefore, come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. Those people are so, so, so doggone critical. Strain out a net and swallow a camel. The lady got something from God on the day of rest. It's okay to get something from God any day. Amen. It's okay to do good every day. It's, you're supposed to do good every day. Amen. Amen? And so he's getting all mad because Jesus healed somebody on the Sabbath day. But God didn't have to do any work. All he had to do was speak the words. Hey, man, he ain't doing any labor, laborious labor. He ain't trying, he ain't trying, you know, uh, uh, put the lady down on the stretcher and, and begin to crack her back and walk on the back. No, he just spoke his word, amen. That's all God has to do. And I'm so thankful. When I got saved, I ain't have to pray for 10 hours, amen. But I work God up, amen. All I had to do is confess my sins to Jesus. And when I confessed my sins to Jesus, I was loose. I was loose. The sun set me free. Walked out feeling light as a bird. That other with a couple weeks later, my pastor said, God want to give you the Holy Ghost. I was like, okay. <laughs> so that altar call the Sunday morning, sir, I'd never forget it. He said, God want to give you the Holy Ghost. I said, okay. He said, all you got to do is yield your heart and your tongue to God. Surrender to God. Give God your heart. Give God your tongue, amen. And I began to do that. I had this heavenly language. I began to pray in the Holy Ghost as the Spirit gives utterance. And when I went outside that day, brother, I began to see the clouds different. I began to see myself different. I began to see people different. Let me tell you something. I have power from on high. Amen. Amen. I was telling my barber about it. He was asking me because his mom goes to a Pentecostal church. He was like, y'all speak in tongues there? And you just like trying to sidestep stuff like that. But I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we pray in the Holy Ghost. He was like, man, that's weird. But I was like, well, you know, when I was a sinner, my tongue was different. I used to cuss a lot. I said, amen. I used to sin a lot. I used to lie a lot. I said, when God, when he saved me, he filled me with his spirit, amen. He took the cussing out of my mouth. I yield my tongue. I got a sanctified tongue because I got a sanctified heart. He gave me a new language. He gave me that prayer language. I began to build myself up as the spirit gives me utterance. So I explained it to him like that, but he got the message. <laughs> I said, God just kind of gave me one, amen. That's why I'm going to start telling people. Use like a sidestep, little things like that, but it's our Bible. When Peter, when Peter got the Holy Ghost, he stopped cussing. He stopped denying Jesus. I said, it's all right, amen. It's, the Lord's all right, amen. If it's all right with Jesus and he had the Holy Ghost, it's all right with me. I said, it's all right with me. That's what you need. And when you get the Holy Ghost, amen, and you don't have to work yourself up. You can repent in this service. You can say, God, I need you in this service. Let me tell you something. And ask God for the Holy Ghost. He will pour his spirit out upon your life. Amen. That's what you need to be a solid Christian. That's why so many Christians, they weak. They read these little daily devotions. Man, you think a daily devotion is going to get you some bread from God? Read a verse a day. But there ain't no meat. You need some meat. Get you some milk. Let us pull the bottle off for you. Desire to send some milk. The unadulterated milk of the word of God. Yeah, it may hurt sometimes. Yeah, the preacher may get on you through the word of God. But I'm so thankful that Jesus, he'll straighten me out, amen. I said he's still straightening, 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 straightening this church out. He'll straighten us out. And I'm so thankful, amen, that he can make us loose. Jesus fought for this lady. I said he fought for her. He beat the devil up. 
just, just tagged them real quick. Didn't, didn't put the gloves on. All he did was put the word on, amen. He beat the devil up. Knocked them out, TKO. By devil, you the weakest link, amen. I'm so thankful. That's all he had to do. And that's what he did for us, amen. He spoke his word. We need his word tonight. Lord, <laughs> Jesus was awesome, man. You ought to read the Gospels, man. He said, Lord, the Lord then answered him, the man, the synagogue, the ruler, the Jewish ruler. He said, thou hypocrite. I told you, Jesus was straight. Straight as an arrow. Boom. Do not each of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass. That's a donkey, all right? Donkey. From the stall and lead him away to water. He said, you be concerned about your animals. Oh, I know why. Because your animals produce money. You can sell yourself. So this is what it was. You're so concerned about your stinking money. You need to be concerned about souls. We, man, my pastor told us this. You can't spell a soul with a dollar sign. Don't ever spell a soul with a dollar sign. You are valuable. You're worth more than money, amen. I'm so thankful, amen, that Jesus, amen, he can make us new. Jesus knew the latest worth. God knows your worth. You're priceless. You've been brought with the price something incorruptible. It was his blood. I said it was his blood. He didn't, God didn't want that kind of ransom of the dollar amount, amen. He needed the blood, some sinless. I said he needed some sinless. The innocent died for the guilty. And he told the fellow, oh, not this woman, being the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound. We realized that Satan had caused this spirit of weakness upon the lady's life to where she couldn't stretch her, her body out. It was the devil behind this. And notice how he describes her. Jesus knew her worth. She's a daughter of Abraham. What she said, what are you saying, preacher? She was a daughter of the promise. God had promised Abraham. She was a daughter of the covenant. She had a right, in other words. You got a right, in, in, in other words. You, you, you got a right in Christ, amen. How many know that? You got a right, amen, to come to the strong bowling. You got a right, amen, to get what you need from God. You got a right. The Bible tells us, amen. Many as received Christ, to them gave he power to be the sons of God. We all have a right to the inheritance because of Jesus. If we're saved this evening, you got a right. If you're not saved, let's get saved. Let's answer that same question from the heart. Let's make that adjustment. Let's get brought of the blood of Christ. Let's get brought. Let's get born again of his spirit. Let's make the adjustment, amen, necessary. But as a Christian, we all have rights in Christ. How many know the, the Bible is a contract? The Old Testament is the old contract. The New Testament is the new contract. That's what a testament is. It's a will. That's what a testament is. You see, you look at the wills, amen. If you did a will before, it says the will, the living will. You got a living will, and then you have a, 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 a testament, a dying will, amen. And so this is a contract. And so God, he can't renege on his word. Does that make sense? But we have to fulfill our obligations as unto the Lord. That's why he said, if you continue in my word, then you're my disciples indeed. And so as a Christian, I got a right to the inheritance. That's what I'm simply saying. I got a right to come to God's strong room bowl and ask God what I need. I got a right to get to pray for somebody and to loose them in earth on, on the earth and they'll be loosed in heaven. I got a right to bind, amen, on earth and they shall be bound, bound in heaven, amen. I've been praying for people, amen, thanking God, amen, for the victory, praying to God to give us all new hearts and a new spirit and remove that stony heart of flesh and give us a new heart. That's what we need, brother. Brother, we don't need a get-rich-quick scheme. We don't need some uh, 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 AA program or whatever. We need that blood brought program we need his blood on our lives amen we need to be free and loose i'm not saying those things are wrong but this is what takes this takes precedence romans chapter 8 as a musician begins to come verse 15 for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. You got the spirit of adoption. You don't have the spirit of bondage anymore. You don't. What's he saying? Paul is saying you don't have to fear anymore. You've been adopted. You've been blood brought. You're in a new family now. He said we cry, Abba, Father. That's an Aramaic term that means daddy. We're able to call God daddy now. That's a term of endearment. By knowledge, by faith. We know God. We belong to him. It's personal. 
The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The Holy Ghost will let you know, man, he belong to me. And I tell you, I tell the folks all the time, I wake up in the morning and say, man, I'm saved. I'm a Christian. I think differently now. Man, it's society. That's awesome. That's the Holy Ghost bearing witness with my spirit, with my mind. Amen. That I'm, I belong to God. Look, right here in verse 17. And if children, then heirs. If we're God's children, we are heirs. You know what an heir is, right? An heir has the inheritance of the father, amen, of his father. He said, if you're a child, you're you also an heir of God. He said, this heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. What does he say? We got this as a Christian. We got the same inheritance that Christ has. Because we're children of God. Is that right? He said, then heirs of God. He said, then you are a joint heir of Christ. That means Christ shares his inheritance with the brethren, with the brothers and sisters in Christ. That means everything that Jesus has, I have a right to as God's child. Man, that'll make anybody shout. Man, I'm saying, folks, listen, anything in the word of God, it belongs to you because of Christ. He said this. I'm going to shut down right here. You can start playing. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So you got to continue. He said you got to suffer. You're going to have to go through things. But if you suffer with him, you'll be glorified. God's going to take care of you. He said, Lord, I'll be with you all the way, right? Even to the end of the world. Just because you're going through things doesn't mean you don't have a right to that inheritance. Jesus went through things. He still had, had a right to God's throne room. He still got along with God. He still prayed. He still clinged to the scriptures. He still trusted God every step of the way. You still got a right, even if things don't look right with the left eye. Does that make sense? You still got a right to go to God's throne room, bowl, bowl in the pray, and to ask God to give you strength to be loose from things. Amen? The enemy, that spirit of weakness. How about it tonight? Musician. As she begins to sing, what are you saying? I'm saying, you don't have to sell it tonight. Don't accept where you're at. Climb high in Jesus. Well, preacher, you don't understand how long I've been in my weakness. That's irrelevant. The lady was in her weakness for 18 years. The point of it, the fact of the matter is, get to God. Get to God. Why don't, you just, why don't we stand? This woman received healing because she had faith. To go to the synagogue, to meet Jesus, to be touched by the Master. Do you have that same faith this evening? With all his proud eyes, closed and reverence to God, God, I endeavor to preach a word. God, I thank you for each one here. Help them have the faith to believe and to be loose. God bless you. The altar is open. The altar is open. Get the Holy Ghost tonight. Be loose. You're infirmities.
thankful for his mercy this evening. Amen. Why don't we stand as we dismiss in prayer? Have a happy Monday in the Lord. And remember, you are a child of God, and you don't have to settle for anything less than the word of God fulfilled in your life. Amen. God bless you. Don't settle for anything less than what God told you from his word. God bless you. Have a happy Monday in the Lord. We'll see you, Lord willing, when? Tuesday. Tuesday at 6.30. Prayer meeting, Bible study at 7.30. And don't forget our special prayer service Wednesday as well at 6.30. God bless you. As I pray, I'd like to ask at this time, <clears throat> Sister Hardy, if you'll dismiss us in prayer. Thank you.